Dogs are said to be man's best friend. Greyhounds are no exception. Let me introduce you to Bullets, a purebred racing greyhound. Greyhound racing. It has been banned and bashed for many years, but it's normal and comfortable for our four-legged friends. I'm Christopher Collins, and in this documentary, we will show you the average life of a racing greyhound from the farm to the track to the couch. There have been so many falsehoods about greyhound racing, but the truth is, these dogs love to run. Growing up on a farm, they are given the best love and care possible. Many people believe that the farms breed just for the money, but the truth is, whatever money these happy hounds make are put right back into the dogs. We visited two farms, Roban and Blue 2, where we got to see what these dogs did on a daily basis. We start day one when puppies are born. They're actually, every single day of their life, they're handled, picked up, worked with, and they're scored every week from birth until the time they leave to go to the track. So we start with this little object, and it's really kind of neat. It, they're exposed to it until they're about six weeks old. They get, uh, depending on the age, um, they might get five to 15 minutes of time with it. It actually expands out. It can be really big up to six week old puppies. Then at six weeks old, the program changes drastically because they're actually introduced to a, a line drag lure and different types of things that stimulate their vision. The whirly gig that we use is only one size and it's preparing the dogs to be able to go to the racetrack and run further a quarter of a mile. But the whirly gig, we would start off asking them to run one lap. Um, if they do that successfully, we'll move up to two. They typically don't ever run more than three laps around there. The point is for them just to learn run in a circle and to stay in real tight and close instead of running way out by the fence. We want them in close. And then just to get them excited about hitting the lure. You got to see them. Um, one even pulled the little bear off of there because she was excited about getting it. Once the puppies are born, uh, it, it's a lot of work. It's a massive amount of work because they are evaluated every day. Puppies are picked up. Um, the program that we use is a kind of a combo of our own and a NASA designed program. It um, stimulates the puppies. It introduces them from a tiny age to things that they might not necessarily be introduced to. Like one of the things we do with a little tiny baby puppy is we'll hold that little baby puppy, we'll turn them like they're actually able to stand up and touch their feet to the ground for a moment. And the surface of the ground is cooler. So the reaction we want to see is that the puppy will retract their legs. A puppy that just keeps their legs down there is maybe not going to be as quick reactive wise as one that actually withdraws their legs. Um, our training schedule, a dog normally begins training around 13 months old. Um, the first couple of weeks, they aren't expected to do anything other than learn how to live in a kennel um, and have that experience of a crate as opposed to these large open runs that they've been growing up in. So they're getting used to that. They begin to learn how to walk on their collars well, on their leashes, and then we begin the further training. They'll be in training around four to five months before they actually leave to go to the racetrack. Every week of their life, they are taken out and given a task at least three times a week from, obviously not when they're teeny tiny, but we're doing other things with them. But from the time they're about eight weeks old, they are actually given a task. In our program, if a dog doesn't score, again, the, the scoring goes from one to five one being the worst and five being the best. If a dog doesn't score a three, they don't get to go to the next task. We keep working on that task until the dog accomplishes what it is that we're trying to do. We, it's kind of a Montessori method for dogs. We want them to achieve and succeed, but we take our time with them. We will keep dogs back for a long time if we have to. And this all matters as they go down the line and become a super athlete. Super athlete is right. After months of building their muscle and agility, it's time for them to race. Some of my hear most common is we force them to run. Uh, there's no way you can force a dog to, to run. It's just, it's just not physically possible to force them to run. It is in their nature, it's in their DNA, it's inbred into them for thousands of years to chase. And that's what they love to do. Beginning racers go through something called schooling, where they learn to run the track by a fixed lure. We went to Derby Lane in St. Petersburg, Florida, where we followed a dog named Bullet. We followed him on his racing day to the track, to his weigh-in, to the pre-check by the track vets and the racing secretary. Yes, what we're doing here is these are dogs for the next race. And before the dogs go out on the track for the next race, uh, I myself, I'm the paddock judge. I'll go around with my program 
and the cards that have their tattoo numbers on their ears and all their colors and all their markings on their body and on their feet and their toes, toenails. And what I do is I check the tattoos and I'm verifying both those tattoos match that card. Uh, we do not want a wrong dog to get on the track and in a race. And it's a lot of implications if we send a wrong dog on the track. So those bases have got to be covered. And then I also have a blanket master that works under me and he'll go around and he'll double check the tattoos as well to make sure everything's right. And then after I do that check, I will go around, I'll check the collars, make sure they're tight enough so the dogs don't get loose on the track. And I'll check their muzzles, make sure those aren't loose. We don't want those falling on a race. We finally got to experience his fast like a bullet reflexes, where this dog even won his race. After his race, this champion took a quick shower and then walked to his turnout pen. Then he went to his bed to lay down after a long day of work. We hope Bullet has a long, illustrious career before he retires. Not from being a dog, but from racing. It's now the time of their life where these dogs get to be adopted by a family who are wanting a fast friend. I traveled to the home of Sharon Dipple, who is in charge of the GST Sun State Adoption Group. GST Sun State Greyhound Adoption was started in July of 2014. Our group was started by the racing industry to find homes for dogs when they were retired from their racing careers. We receive dogs anywhere from the age of 16 months all the way up to five years. At 16 months, mostly the dogs find that they have no interest in running. They want to do more like play and kind of trot around and chase butterflies um, as opposed to being um, focused on the lore. Oh. Our group is Greyhound Pets of America, Tampa Bay. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, which uh, we have no employees. We're an all volunteer organization. So everything we do is done through volunteers. Uh, we have a, um, our adoption partner is Derby Lane. We um, have set up an infrastructure in the United States with multiple adoption groups all over the 50 states, all the way through Alaska offering Greyhounds the ability to be placed in forever homes. GST Sun State Greyhound Adoption has a very simple adoption process. We request an application to be filled out. That application asks multiple questions, but the most important things that I look for is that if someone owns their home, they make their own decision on getting a dog. If they do not own their home, then I need to check with their landlord or leasing agent and make sure that they will allow a greyhound to be within the home. Our group is all about quality adoptions. We want to find the right home for the greyhound and we want to find the right greyhound for the home. Um, we never look at it that we're losing a greyhound. We always look at it as we're gaining a family into Greyhound Pets of America. Uh, that's very important to us. So the greyhound will go into foster and that foster could be anywhere from two weeks, a month, or till we find the right home uh, for that greyhound. Uh, the fosters take the greyhounds to what we call meet and greets, which are generally at uh, local pet stores. You know, and we get a chance to, to dispel rumors about the breed. Uh, some of the most common rumors is that they're not well, well cared for uh, during the racing. And I'll tell you, we get healthy, happy dogs uh, into our pet kennel. Uh, One of the biggest myths is, is that they need a lot of room to run. Um, as any other dog, they need to be walked on a schedule, they need to be fed on a schedule, but they certainly don't need a large fenced in yard to run in. They're just as happy sleeping on a couch. Um, our responsibility is, is to help, them make, uh, help the Greyhound make that transition successfully, transition into the home successfully, and then stay in touch with the adopters over the life of the Greyhound and make sure you know, that everybody's happy. If you're interested in adopting a retired Greyhound, find a local adoption group near you. If you live in the Tampa Bay area, please consider going to sunstategreyhounds.org or greyhoundpets.com. These adoption groups have helped find homes for hundreds of greyhounds, and they're always looking for families with open doors so the greyhounds can live the rest of their lives with a carefree doggy spirit. <laughs>